Okay guys, here's the situation. You're looking at building a brand new gaming rig with the objective of spending as little as possible, but still want to receive a decent level of performance. I've done a heap of videos that look at which GPU delivers the best bang for your buck, but what about budget processors? The choice isn't quite as simple as just picking AMD or Intel. Both companies have a multitude of options in the sub $100 category. To make things simple, I'm going to quickly eliminate a good number of them. You might have noticed that Intel's still pushing their Haswell processors out the door, but for a brand new build, I recommend avoiding these processors. The LGA 1150 platform is going out of fashion fast. Moreover, there's just one standout processor in this price range anyway, the fully unlocked Pentium Anniversary Edition G3258 for $70. Looking to Intel's current Skylake Pentium lineup, we find the G4400 at $60 and the G4500 at $90, while the G4520 is pushing $100. A few months ago, I would have said don't bother with these processors and instead get the highly overclockable G3258 as the ability to push this process over 4 GHz makes it a much better value proposition. Intel's budget Skylake processors became considerably more attractive once motherboard makers such as ASRock, Biostar and Supermicro started developing support for non k overclocking. Supermicro has even gone one step further and engineered a special H170 overclocking motherboard which I'll be reviewing shortly. Now with the ability to push the 3.3 GHz G4400 all the way to 4.6 GHz, it's become our new favourite budget Intel processor. On the other side of the fence we find AMD and their small army of extremely affordable quad core processors, most notably the FX4350 at $90 and the Athlon X4 860K at an almost impossible to refuse $75. Supporting FM2 Plus motherboards start at a little over $40, but if you want to go the full hog and get yourself an A88X motherboard, then expect to shell out at least $60. Add another $40 for an 8GB DDR3 memory kit and you have yourself what looks to be a very capable $175 combo. Meanwhile, budget Intel shoppers opting for the G4400 will need to spend $60 on the CPU and around $100 on a Z170 motherboard if they wish to overclock. The ASRock Z170A X1 can be had for $95. Add in another $45 for a DDR4 2400 8GB kit and the total bill comes to $205. Now I know it seems a little bit crazy to spend so much more on the motherboard than the processor, but the overclocking potential of this combo is enormous. Still, if you don't plan to overclock, then an H110 motherboard will drop the total price to just $155. What I want to know is how these two processors compare in the latest games. Games such as Just Cause 3, Rainbow Six Siege, Star Wars Battlefront, Fallout 4 and more. In an effort to find out which is the best value option for gamers, I'll be testing both the Athlon X4 860K and Pentium G4400 at their standard clock speeds, as well as maximum overclock frequency. Since these are sub $100 CPUs, I felt it prudent to pair them with a realistic graphics card for testing, so not a Titan X. Instead, I'll be testing with two GPU configurations, one with the Radeon R9 380 and another with the GeForce GTX 960. Both cost $200 or less. Using the GTX 960, we find that both the 860K and G4400 are able to push the graphics card to its limits before any overclocking takes place. Now with the R9 380, we see that while overclocking these processors makes little difference, the G4400 offers a slight performance advantage over the 860K. Again, we find that overclocking these processors provides no additional performance with the GTX 960, though the G4400 does again have a slight performance advantage over the 860K. Moving to the R9 380 provided us with similar results, and again, the G4400 is able to slightly edge out AMD's budget quad core. The Call of Duty Black Ops 3 results are interesting, though not significant. The G4400 is able to max out the GTX 960 at just 3.3 gigahertz, while the 860K needs to be overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz, and even then the minimum frame rate is slightly lower. Now the Black Ops 3 results with the R9 380 are genuinely interesting for the simple fact that the 860K gets hammered when looking at the minimum frame rate. Just to be sure, I even triple checked these results. There was noticeable lag spikes when using the 860K even when overclocked, and this wasn't the case with the G4400 which appeared very smooth. This Fallout 4 test takes part when exiting the vault, and in this section of the game using the GTX 960, both the G4400 and 860K deliver acceptable frame rates, though Intel's dual core processor does have a small performance advantage. Using the R9 380, the minimum frame rate takes a huge dive on these budget processors, and the 860K even struggles when looking at the average frame rate, which when overclocked was just over 50 FPS. Meanwhile, the overclocked G4400 was good for almost 70 FPS. Now, as we move into the city of Boston for some more Fallout 4 benchmarking, we find very different results. Neither CPU allows for particularly impressive 
performance when benchmarking with the GTX 960, that the G4400 is considerably faster than the 860K. Using the R9 380 you provided some very mixed results in the Fallout 4 Boston test. The stock G4400 tanked with massive stuttering as it dropped down to 11 FPS. Overclocking the G4400 seemed to cure this problem, but with a minimum frame rate of just 21 FPS, it wasn't exactly smooth gameplay. The 860K on the other hand played better than the non-overclocked G4400, but much worse than the overclocked G4400. Just Cause 3 is known to play rough with low-end hardware, but we were surprised by how well it played on the lowly G4400 and GTX 960 combo. Granted performance wasn't stellar, but with a minimum frame rate of 37 FPS, the game was playable despite noticeable input lag when driving. The 860K on the other hand was noticeably laggy almost all the time, and I found driving vehicles for example to be extremely difficult. Just Cause 3 performance was a bit of a mess with the R9 380 and these processors, not even the heavily overclocked G4400 delivered smooth performance performance. Mad Max caused few problems with the GTX 960 as we found both the G4400 and 860K were able to provide very playable performance. The R9 380 provided similar performance trends in Mad Max with our budget AMD and Intel processors. Here we see Rainbow Six Siege plays just as well on the 860K as it does on the G4400 and with the GTX 960 in use there's no need to overclock. Even with the R9 380 we find similar results and although the 860K has to be overclocked to match the stock G4400 there was just 3 FPS in it and at over 70 FPS for the minimum that isn't a significant margin. Star Wars Battlefront is another game where the 860K and G4400 deliver similar performance and overclocking these CPUs doesn't aid performance with the GTX 960. Testing again with the R9 380 we find that the standard 860K is again slightly off the pace of the G4400 but with just 2 to 3 frames in it the margin isn't substantial. The Witcher 3 test takes place in the town of Novigrad, the town known to slay dual core processors. Yet despite that the G4400 is found triumphant when using the GTX 960 and by a rather large margin I might add when comparing the minimum frame rate. Swapping out the GTX 960 for the R9 380 really mixes up the results and here the stock G4400 really struggles, dropping down to just 22 FPS with an average of only 33 FPS, making it much slower than the 860K. However, once overclocked, the G4400 finds form and returns to its winning ways with a minimum of 39 FPS and an average of 48 FPS. If we take the average minimum frame rate from the 10 games tested, the results aren't as expected, at least they're not what I was expecting. With the GTX 960 handling all the rendering work, the 860K saw an average minimum of 43 FPS and just 44 FPS once overclocked. The G4400 on the other hand was slightly faster with 48 FPS and just 49 FPS once overclocked. The margin between the 860K and G4400 doesn't really change with the R9 380, but we do find that the overclock configurations provide a more meaningful advantage. The 860K averaged a 41 FPS minimum at the standard clock speed but was able to match 44 FPS of the GTX 960 once overclocked. Much the same is found when using the G4400 with the R9 380. It averaged a minimum of 45 FPS in its out of the box configuration and went on to average the same 49 FPS minimum once overclocked as it did with the GTX 960. This means without any overclocking the G4400 was roughly 10% faster than the 860K with either the 380 or 960. Having overclocked with both processors, the G4400 was 11% faster than the 860K with both graphics cards. It's also interesting to note that the standard 3.3GHz G4400 was still 9% faster than the overclocked 860K with the GTX 960 and 2% faster with the R9 380 when comparing the minimum frame rate. However, for me the average minimums don't tell the whole story. There were just two instances where the stock G4400 faltered and they were seen when testing the Boston City section of Fallout 4 and Novigrad with The Witcher 3. In both instances, overclocking fixed the performance issues and saw the G4400 easily outperform the overclocked 860K. The quad-core 860K, on the other hand, a processor many would expect to deliver more consistent performance, seemed to be all over the place. Essentially, it was only the GPU-bound games where the 860K kept us cool. Games such as Batman Arkham Knight, Battlefield 4, Mad Max, Rainbow Six Siege and Star Wars Battlefront all played nice with the 860K. However, the more CPU dependent titles such as Fallout 4, Just Cause 3 and The Witcher 3 played very poorly on the 860K. Call of Duty Black Ops 3 was another game, though it ran okay with the GTX 960 but not so much with the R9 380. 
In fact, AMD's own R9 380 wreaked havoc on their budget quad-core processor, and this is the very reason why AMD started pushing low-level APIs such as Mantle a few years ago. The fact that the G4400 is a dual-core processor and the 860K is a quad-core really doesn't play any significant role in this battle, certainly not like many would have you believe. However, if you could halve the clock speed of the G4400 from the standard 3.3GHz to 1.65GHz and added two more cores, it would likely end up being slower in almost all of these games. That probably shouldn't surprise anyone, but I'm trying to make the point that the more cores aren't necessarily always better, at least when comparing different architectures. Please note that I'm not trying to bash AMD here and I'm certainly not suggesting that clock for clock the 860K is half as fast as the G4400, but it has to be said that Intel's Skylake IPC efficiency is considerably greater than that of AMD's Steamroller. So in this comparison, comparing the number of cores is about as useful as comparing megahertz. It's not all good news for potential G4400 buyers though. In what is a very slimy move, we believe Intel is currently working to disable non-K overclocking. They'll do this in an update to the processor's microcode, which will be delivered in the form of a BIOS update. This means that those with the overclocking BIOS will be stuck at their current revision if they wish to keep their overclock. This isn't a big deal though, and chances are you would only need to update your BIOS from this point forward to support a new processor anyway. Overall, both the Athlon X4 860K and Pentium G4400 deliver impressive performance at well under $100, but we feel the more consistent G4400 is the better buy. Thanks for watching another Hardware Unbox comparison video. I'm your host, Matt, and if you've got any questions at all, then please leave them at our forum at hardwareunbox.com or in the comments section below. Don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, and we'll see you next time.